Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers basically limped into the playoffs. There were three teams in the NFC South that had only seven wins, and they were the lone team to do better than that, although not by much. Eight and nine, still under 500, yet still a playoff team. And there are a lot of uncertainties with this team following a crippling loss to the Dallas Cowboys where they were embarrassed at home. But one thing seems pretty clear, and it's that Tom Brady likely will not be the quarterback of the Bucks in 2023. He is not under contract. There are rumors swirling here and there about where Tom Brady will go next if he continues to play and just doesn't retire again. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be Tampa. They got a lot of roster holes. They have an aging roster and they don't have a quarterback. So in this rebuild, we're going to do whatever we can to bring the Bucks back to their greatness of winning the Super Bowl just, you know, a couple of years ago. And of course, you know, in the early 2000s, late 90s, they had some pretty good teams, won the Super Bowl in what, 2001? 01, maybe? No, 2002. Uh, of course, the games played in 2003, but it was a 2002 season. They had some legendary Tampa Bay Bucks, and of course, John Gruden as their head coach, who they traded multiple first round picks for, which is just really, it was Tony Dungy's team anyway. Anyway, that's a whole thing. That's not what we're worried about today. Uh, I will be doing realistic rebuilds down the line now that we have kind of a better idea of which players are actually going to be declaring for the 2023 draft. That deadline has passed, so we know who's going to be in it, right? So I got to update my draft class and get back to these realistic rebuilds, but this one, kind of anything goes. Uh, computer generated draft classes and we'll see if we can find a stud quarterback to replace the greatest of all time in Tom Brady. You know what's funny is they simulated the whole year and the Bucks still went eight and nine. Kind of fun uh, in a way, although this team did not make the playoffs. And the reason I don't just start with the real life roster where you can jump into week 17 or wherever they have it is because when you use the auto generated rookies in the real life roster, it is always the same draft class for that week it will never change maybe 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 you could import a draft class and then like unimport it and just make it another auto generated class maybe that's something i'll test out but for now it's really more focused about just rebuilding the team it's not about you know individual record dress of the league just focus on the tampa bay bucks and we're gonna have to because we're gonna have some players that certainly regress. Tom Brady will be one of them, but as I mentioned, this is not someone that's going to be on the team next year as his contract is. I mean, technically he's under contract for 2023. Shouldn't be. Yeah, in real life, 2023 to 2026 are void years. They are not real. And there's a no tag clause for 2023. So he's gone. How is he not gone? I mean, it pretty much if Tom Brady wants to leave, he can. And uh, the Bucks are going to deal with 35 million in dead cap. So what we're going to do, I guess now that we're in the offseason, is release Tom Brady because there's nothing that is keeping him here. We can't trade him. He is an unrestricted free agent. Inflation is crazy right now. The price of everything is ridiculous. And that's why we need to take advantage of everything we can to offset these ridiculous costs. That's where Upside, the sponsor of today's video, comes in. Upside offsets inflated prices by giving you cash back on your purchases. Upside's a great option if you buy gas, buy groceries, or if you go out to eat and they'll give you cash back. Upside's completely free and in the Google Play and App Store on iPhone. And when you use code Bengal, you can get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. And my favorite way to use Upside anyway is at the gas station because I feel like those are some of the prices that have gone up most over the past couple years or so. Once you download the free app, you claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and follow the easy steps in the app to get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards and loyalty programs, you actually get three times more cash back with Upside, so it's a no-brainer. Cash out anytime to your bank, PayPal, or even to e-gift cards like Amazon or other brands. And you can feel safe and secure with Upside because they don't sell your personal information to third parties as they know that your information is a big part of that trusted consumer and company relationship. Upside users are earning hundreds of dollars per year, and that's a big part of why their 4.8 star rating is so high on the App Store. I especially love it at the gas station. I think you guys are gonna be able to take advantage of that as well. So download the free Upside app today. Use code BANGLE to get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. Adds up pretty quickly. And thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's video. Okay, and we have made it to free agency, essentially, because we have to re-sign some players. 
And even though Tom Brady is an unrestricted free agent, there are some other players that we will have to make tough decisions on as well. That is the longtime Tampa Bay Buck, Levante David, Jamel Dean, Logan Ryan I'm out on, Akeem Hicks, John Murphy Bunting, Keanu Neal. There are a bunch of really, really big free agents here, and I'm not sure how many of them we're going to be able to re-sign. I would say, for me... The priority is going to be Jamel Dean and then maybe Levante David, but he's not a long-term solution. Dean on maybe a four-year contract I would like, and Jamel Dean returns. Levante David, I guess I could do a two-year deal on, take the money down a little bit. He's aging, he's regressing, he's going to be a lot worse by the time that contract expires, but it'll be okay for the next year or so before we can figure out a replacement. John Murphy Bunting is another guy who's like, not amazing. And I just, I don't think we're going to re-sign him. I think he's probably someone we let walk. And I think we're just going to go fully into rebuild mode. Just focus on picks, focus on getting better. And uh, it's going to start with releasing Tom Brady. Or he retired. Okay. Julio Jones retired as well. It's okay. Tom Brady retiring is the same thing as not having him. It's just that in real life, it's speculated that he's going to go to a different team. Although he could definitely still retire. That is certainly still on the table, but... Works for me. And now free agency. Tony Pollard is here. But speaking of running backs, we got to talk about Leonard Fournette. An 82 overall is generous for Leonard Fournette, in my opinion. He's actually up to an 83. Ryan Jensen really didn't regress at all. I expected that he would. He's 32. I guess it's not super old. He just didn't regress at all. Okay, well, we'll have a really good option at center here. But Leonard Fournette, man... How is he in 83 still? A little over eight a year for the next two years. I guess we can keep him. We're not really struggling for money that badly at this point. Donovan Smith is probably a cut candidate for me. 30 years old, 73 overall, playing up to a 75. One year left on his contract, so I guess we can probably just keep him through 2023. But left tackle is another position we're going to really look to upgrade. Tony Pollard would be a really great acquisition. I do like our second string running back, Rashad White from Arizona State. But Tony Pollard would certainly be better. I just don't think we're going to pay him what he wants. It's actually, it's less than what Leonard Fournette is getting paid. And he's got an interest in the team. I would give him a three-year deal. We're probably not going to get him. That's okay. So I've targeted Tony Pollard, Nate Davis, and Nasir Adderley. Nasir Adderley would be a really nice addition in the back end. Nate Davis would start probably at left guard for me, but I don't think he's going to end up signing. I don't think Tony Pollard will either. Uh, and Nasir Adderley is the only one we bring in, which is okay. Immediate starting free safety for me, I think. I was a really big fan of his game at Delaware. Uh, he was someone I managed to scrape together some all 22 on, and uh, he was just an electric Middle of the field, single high, free safety. Hasn't exactly been that type of a player in the NFL so far, but it's been good. He's definitely developed pretty nicely and uh, is a nice addition to our secondary. He's probably going to start at strong safety for us, of course, with Antoine Winfield Jr. at free safety. And uh, the defensive group as a whole is pretty good. The secondary, I think, is maybe the best of the bunch with Jamel Dean being retained. And I'm a big fan of Zion McCollum. He was a, another guy I managed to get all 22 on, funnily enough, at his small town, Sam Houston State. Really, really good. I think he's going to end up surprising a lot of people. This is one of my draft crushes. I couldn't believe he went uh, as late in the draft as he did. I think he's going to end up being a pretty good starter. Um, Shaq Barrett is down to a 78 overall. That is horrific. That is really, really bad for us regressing maybe a potential trade candidate for us but we just got to continue to get better and we'll just see what's available in the draft you know we don't really have a ton of money right now I think we did okay enough we're gonna have problems with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and you know some of these big players that over the course of this thing we're gonna have to either resign or trade or do something with so not trying to spend a ton of money right now just a little bit more focused on the draft and trying to hit on all of our picks, obviously. And I'm not afraid to take a receiver. Let's say Mario Martin is legit, which he appears to be. A catch in traffic, A catching, A release, 6'5", 230. Colorado, been working with Dion. Of course, just arrived there. Oh, he's elite everything. It's Calvin Johnson. Okay, so Mario Martin, 
I'm going to have to make a move up for. I'm not going to leave a generational player on the board. And that's what Mario Martin appears to be also. A plus name, in my opinion. Get the alliteration of double M. Mario, that's a, that's a powerful receiver name as well. Uh, JT Schaub here. Any relation to Matt Schaub? We have to trade for him. Got elite throw power. He's a decent athlete. He can throw it a little bit down the field. This could actually be a very good, very good draft class in general. I don't know how we're going to handle this. We might get a little bit crazy. We might get a little bit crazy. These aren't the super realistic rebuilds like we do with the when realistic rebuilds actually in the thumbnail. And I let you know at the beginning of the video. Uh, so we can get a little bit crazy if we want to get some of the best players in the draft. Jason Jarrett, that's another good name. Really, really fast. This would help us transition to a 4-3 if we wanted to do that, or it's just a Levante David replacement. There are already three players I really, really want, and how am I even going to get one of them? We are in a tough spot. And I guess really, you know, the question I'm going to ask myself is how pissed are Bucks fans going to be if I trade Mike Evans to move up for a fake receiver? That's going to be tough. And Tristan Wirfs is unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to decline his fifth-year option just so we can extend him for as cheap as possible. So I don't want to give him a tag and then pay him even more. I want to pay him whatever it is right now and just have him long-term. Now, this is interesting. This is Leonard Fournette down the board essentially for us. Really great speed, best in the class, round two to three projection, which is where you want to take a running back anyway, and he's a power back. Michael Shepard, someone we're going to go ahead and tag here. A strong, uh, or a man covered strong safety is interesting. 5'10", 205. I don't know. This is a very interesting draft class. So much so that it, right outside linebacker, I can't even find the fastest players. I don't even know where they exist. But you click on one guy... It's four, six, seven at his pro day, which is not awful. And that's the 15th fastest. You go through just clicking on different players. Will Lashley, he ran, he's slow, but he clicked these players. They're all the same speed, though. My, they're all like four, six, five. And it's 12th or 8th. I can't find the crazy fast guy. Here, this guy is four, six, four at, his, at the NFL Combine, is fourth fastest. They're all the same speed. We're seeing anything like it. I don't know what this draft is going to look like at all, but I know we're going to be aggressive. We are going to get wild. And if it involves trading players that you love as a Bucks fan, tough day to be you. All right, we pick at number 29. How is that possible? How do we... How did we go 8-9, and nine, miss the playoffs, and get a worse pick? We had 29. I can't even figure it out. Did we somehow sneak into the playoffs and make a deep run? Is that what happened? Well, we can't even tell now. Okay. Hmm. That's going to make it more difficult to trade up by a lot. I don't know how we're going to do this. I mean, am I really going to value a receiver over quarterback? We need a QB so badly. So do the Bears, to be honest. But Kyle Trask. Nope. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. This is going to be the trade. It's not actually. I have to give up more, which I guess makes sense. Uh, I am going to give up. That's so much, dude. It's so much. My, but also, it's a number one pick. I get it. Mike Evans, who's 30 and regressing and has a big contract. Shaq Barrett, who is regressing but still a superstar. Uh, big contract. And a third, number 91, for number one. And I know, like, you'd never take a receiver at number one. I know that. But at the same time, he's going to go at number one. So if I want Mario Martin, I have to draft him with this pick. He's very good. Very good. I just don't think I can pass up on this type of talent. The only thing that's even slightly questionable is the deep route running. But he's he's got 4-3 speed. He's going to be amazing. And damn, I mean, we lost Mike Evans. We need a replacement at receiver. I'm going to, I mean, you're not going to like it, but it, it has to happen. It has to happen. With the first overall pick, we are taking Colorado's Mario Martin. 22-year-old receiver. Left-handed. 
and is a freak. Hidden development, 98 acceleration, 90 agility at 6'5", 230, 92 change of direction, 99 jumping, 96 speed, strength at 77. He's going to be a superstar X-Factor. He's going to be a generational receiver. I could not pass on him. And as for what that means with the quarterback, I don't know. He could go at any point. He's still available at four, to be fair. I don't know that the Steelers would take him. They might, they might not. He's still available. I don't think the Eagles would take him. The Lions might be the first team that would consider him at number six. So it's good to see that the draft logic has improved, but there should be trades. I mean, teams should be moving up. JT Schaub, there's stuff to like, for sure. Elite arm, good accuracy down the field, good throw under pressure. I, I worry about the player notes a little bit with the traits. Really just a pocket guy. Uh, could use some improvement of recognizing pressure. Abandons initial read in favor of the check down. I worry about some of those things, but I don't know. It feels like we have a multiple piece of clay. Do we take the shot? I think we do. We're going to try to move up. I do not want to pass up my first round pick next year. It's projected to be pretty low in the draft, but I think it's going to end up being a lot higher than that. So the question becomes, what can I actually trade in order, like player wise, in order to get this pick? They need a tight end, Kate Otten. Don't really want to trade Kate Otten. Right guard. I could trade Shaq Mason. Quarterback, of course. Left outside linebacker just traded Shaq Barrett, but they want an off-the-ball player. And I kind of want another off-the-ball linebacker in this class. I'm being wild. I am full aware, fully aware. Uh, there's like a defensive tackle down the board I kind of like. I just can't, I can't have everything I want. That's the problem. The only way I'd be able to do it is Shaq Mason and two first round picks. I just have to pass on the QB. I know that seems crazy, but we're just going to accept the fact that we are more than just one year away and watch the QB get taken. He's still available at seven. They went with a left tackle. Interesting. It's still going to be the same situation though. I'm willing. He's still on the board. <laughs> Terrell Porter at a temple goes, what's wrong with him? Is he like, uh, what's the movie with draft day? Bo Davis, that's the Texas defensive line coach. Bo Callahan, JT Schaub, is he, uh, n n like, none of his teammates went to his birthday party. I get it, 23 years old, Central Michigan, not really a lot of prestige there. Although, who is, the, who is Central Michigan's good quarterback? Was that uh, Dan LeFavor, he's Central Michigan? Dan LeFavor was Central Michigan, also a uh, Tampa Bay Buck quarterback in 2016. Didn't look like he made the final roster, but yes, Dan LeFavor... CMU, sixth round pick. JT Schaub, man, he's getting more and more intriguing. The RS Fitzsimmons is a player I like too, but we're just going to have to accept the fact that we can't draft him. Great athlete, great man coverage. I'm looking at what seems to be a stud slot cornerback. Just going to have to look a different direction. And then Jason Jarrett is another player I would love to be able to draft. Really would. So fast, great pursuit, tackling, coverage is not terrible. I wonder about the rest of the player. It looks good, but eh, probably couldn't take him. Maybe we try to trade up with the Colts here. They conveniently also need a right guard more than anything. So, Jack Mason, I'm going to use you as a trade piece, hopefully. Is there any take Russell Gage? Oh, man. I don't need Russell Gage at all. I would give you a second round pick and Russell Gage. Not going to work. How about a first in Russell Gage? Oh, it's so close, but just not there. Okay, trading number 29, a fifth this year and a fifth next year for number 25 from the Titans. And I'm then going to use that first round pick to move up with the Colts. It'll be a little bit more valuable. It means it should be easier to make that trade. I know it's, it's already crazy. It is what it is. We're going to try and trade up for the future of our team. It's worth it now, even if it's going to be painful at first, it's going to be worth it in the long run. So number 25 and our starting right guard, Shaq Mason, as well as Russell Gage. Can I get anything back from them? Got a fourth back next year. I'll take that. I know it's a crazy start, but yeah, Shaq Mason, Russell Gage, and a first gets me number eight and a fourth round pick next year. At least we got some more value, and I'm going to use this to take the quarterback 
Red flags should be waving all around. Sirens should be going off. Don't take this QB. He's a bust. Everybody's passing on him. Here's the thing. I do not care about normal development. The reason I do not is because he's already got really good accuracy and throw under pressure with an elite arm, good athleticism. So if he, had, he, if he has normal dev, he's good enough right now to win Rookie of the Year and pretty much immediately go up to star development in a heavy passing offense. So that's what we're aiming for here. Hopefully better than normal dev. But at quarterback, it's not really super important. Does have normal. Figured that could be the case with teams passing on him. But 94 throw power with good speed. I think we're going to be able to win him Rookie of the Year, get him up to star dev, and then we're going to be cooking. Now, we just don't have the ammo to trade up at all, so we simulated to the end of round two, and uh, we'll see what's available. A few of my favorites. Nicholas Cooper is somebody that I had starred that looked like he could be a freak. 6'1", 289, a little bit undersized at defensive tackle, but ran in the low four sevens with elite speed, elite acceleration, obviously, elite jumping, good strength as well, and uh, he's got A finesse moves, C block shedding, good awareness, good play rate, good tackle. Nicholas Cooper might just be the best player available. Of course, I'm going to evaluate some other things here. Have a number of different interior offensive linemen on the board in case we want to go that direction. And J.R. Grimes looks really, really, really good. Round three to four projected player. He's someone I'll probably end up trading back up for. I think that's our Shaq Mason replacement. So we're going to go and draft Nicholas Cooper with this pick. Could help us move to a 4-3. Does have hidden dev. 89 strength is really, really good. 86 acceleration, 81 speed, 83 jumping. Looks like a stud interior defensive lineman. Very pass rush oriented. And uh, we're going to try and move up for that D tackle just to make sure, or that interior offensive lineman, I should say, just to make sure that guy doesn't go off the board. Shouldn't be that difficult to move up from number 29 to number two here in the third round. Seems like it would be, but I don't think it should be. So number 93, Robert Hainsey, who I, I really didn't want to give up. Only 25 years old. I just think we can replace him in the draft next year. It's just something we're going to worry about later. He's a backup for right now. And a seventh gets us number 66. We're going to take that good interior offensive lineman right now. I still would like to see if that running back's still on the board. I, I didn't see, but he definitely could be gone by this point. And it seems as though he is. But that's okay. You can't get everybody you want. J.R. Grimes, I think, is worth the selection here. Center, only 21 years old. 6'4", 315, huge. A, awareness, A, impact blocking, B, a pass block, and run block. He's a phenomenal athlete. Should be a fantastic pickup for us. Does have hidden dev. 89 strength, 77 speed. Is very high for an offensive lineman. Good acceleration, too, but he's so strong. Change of direction isn't amazing, but that is a very, very good pick. I really think we've aced the draft. I know we've traded up and down. We had multiple top 10 picks in the end, but I think we really hit on all of our picks. We got four players. I know the quarterback having normal dev is going to be a bit of a red flag to a lot of you guys, but hopefully it's the right red flag. The Bucks red flag we can wave around. I don't know, but uh, yeah, we got a stud receiving core for him to throw to. He's going to be a generational receiver. I'm pretty much sure of it. So uh, let's see. Here we go. Mario Martin is... An 84 overall receiver. I think that puts him in generational territory. Superstar X Factor would be my assessment. He is very good. 96 speed. 98 acceleration with 89 catching out of the draft. 89 catching. 90 catching traffic is playing up. 78 short route running. Not terrible. 80 medium. Not terrible right out of the draft. And 74 deep. With 90 spec catch, 83 release, 90 agility, 99 jumping. He's got the aggressive possession and run after catch traits. Uh, he is a monster. I think this is already worth it because is this not a better player than Mike Evans is in two years at the latest? Mike Evans was a 30-year-old 91 overall receiver with going to be the same dev trait as Mario Martin. I know it's a crazy move, but I think it was worth it. I think you guys will agree. JT Schaub is 23 years old already. Cannon of an arm. Short accuracy is not great. But I do think he's pretty good overall. So I feel I feel pretty good about this pick. If we can get him, you know, rookie of the year, he's going to be gold. Nicholas Cooper is a 73, which I feel like is also pretty good. Block shedding at a 69 is a little lower than I'd want, even though it's nice. 76 finesse moves, pretty good. 
Play Rec, Awareness, Tackle all seem to be in good spots. Hit Power, not too bad either. And then J.R. Grimes is going to have to be good. He's going to start at right guard for me. He is a scheme fit. Now he's playing down a little bit, but this is a good pick, I think, overall. Impact blocking is an 88. Lead blocking is an 85. Pass block power is not good, but everything else seems to be in a really good spot. I think we did really, really well in the draft. I'd be interested to see if his overall jumps up one or two as we move him to start at right guard. Again, I, you know, I think we were a little bit crazy in this draft, but I think it's worked out for us. His overall does go up to a 74 at right guard. This was, you know, a phenomenal class. If you look at it here, he is the number 32 ranked right guard right away. Top 20% or 27% of all right guards in the league. So he is at the very worst right now, a starting caliber right guard in the NFL. That's not bad. The team looks pretty good. Cooper's been moved over to right end while, we'll uh, while we're still in a 3-4 Levante David's going to play inside linebacker, which means we need someone that can actually rush the passer uh, to play 3-4 outside linebacker for us. It's going to involve signing somebody in free agency. We have a ton of roster space right now. We obviously traded quite a bit of it uh, in order to make some moves in the draft. Hopefully there are some good options here in free agency. Uh, they're not going to be amazing, but I think they're going to be good enough. We need a third receiver. Noah Brown works. Is there any good, really talented, undrafted player maybe? There's not really. There are a couple of okay players. We might sign them just to see if we can develop them a little bit. But we are probably going to have to just sign a, a, like an actually good receiver. And yeah, I guess Noah Brown will be the guy. We're going to sign Kamale Correa, former Baltimore Raven. I don't know where he's been recently. And also a former New York Giant and Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Jason Pierre All. So we'll bring him back. It's a Band-Aid. It's it's a replacement for the short term. And then uh, we could bring in a good third corner as well. I think... Let's bring in Trey Herndon. Oh no, Chris Godwin's like, Hey, Mario Martin. That's a lot of questions in camp and is eager to learn more. To spend some extra time working with him after practice. I try to focus on. Well, he's already a beast. I don't know which fits here. Long-term development, like he's already got the top dev trait, surely, so... I mean, immediate impact? I don't really know. I don't know what that's going to affect here. And I guess we never find out. Oh, also, you know what I should do? Is sign a mentor quarterback to increase the development of our rookie quarterback. Let's bring in another former New York Giant, Tyrod Taylor. I wish I could have helped Mario Martin more. Is that because I didn't choose long term? I mean, yeah, any growth is good. He's got 2,500 XP. I'm telling you, he's got the top dev trait. Surely, surely he's not like a high-end star or superstar. He's going to be a superstar X-Factor. Got to be. All right, week one, we got rookie QB1. Hey, do you want to show him some flashes? How many times have I seen this? Yeah, show flashes, no expectations, great performance. Show flashes, I think. Two touchdowns and beat the Lions with the JT Shop. It's not a very strong quarterback name. I think of Matt Schaub, I mean, journeyman, quarterback, uh, JT O'Sullivan does some really great work on YouTube, though. Uh, you know, maybe it is a QB name. I thought we would get, like, plus two to deep route running or something as an option. So maybe I clicked the wrong one. Definitely possible. But I think Buck's playbook should be pretty good for throwing the football. Now, I don't know which position on the depth chart is going to get the most targets. Like, in some offenses, it's slot receiver. In others, it's very much not. But I think we're just going to simulate here and see what happens. The right side of our line looks really good. The left side, not so great with Donovan Smith and Luke Gadecki. But hopefully, at least Gadecki can develop. Donovan Smith, we're looking for a replacement. I don't know how good we're going to be this year. I'd love to be able to trade something. It might be something we consider at the midseason mark. You know, an aging player or something. Like, maybe Ryan Jensen goes. If we can... Somehow land a first round pick back. Not sure that's going to be possible, but we'll consider our options depending on what we're looking like at the midseason mark. So I'll see you there. Two and five at the midseason mark. That's not so great. What are our numbers looking like? That's what I'm a little bit more concerned with. 11 touchdowns, five picks for JT Schaub. You know, a rookie season pretty much is what we're looking at here. Fournette has actually been okay. Receiving Godwin, Martin, both same number of catches. Godwin has found the end zone a little bit more. 
We haven't revealed that he's an X-Factor. Yeah, I mean, not really a surprise there. He is a freak. Really good. Ooh, Jamar Chase actually leading the league in receiving. What playbook do we want to go to? We might look to change it up at some point. Joe Burrow is far and away the most right now, but Josh Allen is crushing it in Buffalo. 17 touchdowns to only two interceptions. Davis Mills is actually putting up numbers as well, which is wild. You know, usually you see, you know, like Patrick Mahomes here. I mean, he's got 17 touchdowns to one pick. Maybe a bye week impacting some of these numbers, but still he'd be a long way behind Burrow. He's actually thrown quite a few interceptions. I don't think we're going to change anything right now. It's going to be something we reevaluate at the end of the season. But I'm not sure if 20 passing touchdowns is going to be good enough to win any type of rookie of the year. We might consider some trades right now. Who's going to be an expiring contract? Tristan Wirfs, Antoine Winfield, they're not going anywhere. Devin White's going to be retained. Donovan Smith, we could look to trade maybe. But we need a left tackle, so I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Wirfs is back. Is he from Florida? He, he Surely not. I think he's from Iowa. How is that close to home? He's from Mount Vernon, Iowa. Played at Iowa. I was close to home for him, Florida. Like, the, the fact that he lives there now? Okay. Well, yeah, he plays on the Bucks. All right, shit. Yeah, big loophole. Antoine Winfield is back as well. And then Devin White, we might have to give a little bit more money to, but... That's okay. Welcome back, Devin White. I also signed an undrafted rookie free agent punter, Gregory Stuber. I thought I'd mention it now. I, I, I don't show everything. I don't only would appear to the, the, uh, be the important things. Now, I'm wondering, is there anyone we actually should trade at this point because their value is going to go down? The only one that makes sense to me would maybe be Ryan Jensen. Oh, Levante David. Levante David's got to go. I'm sorry. It's got to happen. Man, our offense is really bad. I know this is crushing, but think about it in the same way that Von Miller was traded. Longtime Tampa Bay Buck here, Levante David had to go as well. We get a first round pick back from the Lions, projected to be about middle of the first round. He, he's playing on a two and five team. He did win a Super Bowl with the Bucks, but maybe he can go chase one with Detroit, who are surging right now. Another national class for a wide receiver is the top. Well, I don't see it here, actually. Probably wouldn't go receiver again. Maybe it's just a deep class. No one really standing out among that group at all. Quarterback is something I might consider. I'm sorry, who is this? I just saw this guy. Alfonso Lacey from Utah. Is this a generational? I, I know I keep throwing that out, but that's we might have two back-to-back. -back. And I've never seen a generational defensive end in the class. Either way, this guy is a freak. B block shed, A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. I have to get to number one. He is a really good athlete. Might not be generational, but is amazing either way. Alfonso Lacey is my pick. I know it already. I know I have to move up to number one. I'll figure it out. Playoff time, we went 7-10. and 10. We're not going to be involved in them. NFC South doing NFC South things. Falcons go 1-16. and 16. Not great from them, admittedly. But let's see our numbers. Ooh, JT Schaub kind of ends up with a pretty good rookie season. 4,700 yards, 47-47. 32 touchdowns to 14 interceptions. We'll take that. That's a very good rookie year. Rushing, Leonard Fournette's got to go. We'll figure that out at some point. Chris Godwin was unbelievable. 108 catches for about 1,700 yards, 15 TDs. Mario Martin only found the end zone two times because Godwin stole all of them. If he was in the wide receiver one spot, he certainly would have gone over. He's up to an 88 overall as a rookie. Deep route running needs to be upgraded, but I'm almost glad he didn't dominate. Because if he stole, you know, uh, what is it? If he stole Rookie of the Year away, I would be a little bit disappointed. I need that to go to the quarterback. And then defensively, Devin White had 160 tackles. 112 for Trey Herndon, who also had 7 for loss. Vita Vea, 23 tackles for loss. Tryon Shioinka was great, 18. Logan Hall played really well, too. He was a former top pick. When he went like first or second pick of the second round, right? Something very close to it. Uh, Nicholas Cooper had a good rookie year, 14 for loss, five sacks. We got, you know, decent pressure on the quarterback. Nothing crazy, but we don't really have those dominant pass rushers in there yet. I think we're going to get one in the draft. We will find a way to trade up to, you know, that number one spot. Did the Lions even make the playoffs? I don't think they did. I don't see them in the schedule there unless they had a first round bye, which I guess is possible, but really hoping that was not the case. 
NFC North. Lions went 6-11. and 11. Did I accidentally trade for the Rams pick? Either way, they went 6-11. and 11. And that this is 2024 now, so I don't even think the Lions have that anymore. So, no, we're good. Uh, thankfully, the Lions collapsed. They were doing pretty well at the midseason mark, surely, because it was projected to be, what, number... Um, Number 17, I think I want to say it was. And uh, certainly a lot different than that now. As they started off, you know, two wins, two losses, win, two losses in a row. And uh, losing four games to end the season. Certainly not good for them, but good for us. We'll take that. Season recap. Ooh, the Battle of the Bay. Formerly, I guess, the Raiders moved to Las Vegas, as you know. And they won the Super Bowl with MVP Josh Jacobs. JT Schaub was your Offensive Rookie of the Year if you can't see it because of my face cam. And the Falcons had a defensive end. Shaq Craig win Rookie of the Year on defense. Rams, of course, had both the Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year. Patrick Mahomes won MVP somehow, even though he wasn't even close to looking like he was going to win it at the midseason mark. Or I guess it maybe it was just yards. I think he had 17 touchdowns to one pick, which is obviously incredible. But we should be doing really, really well here. We'll advance to the next week. I don't really think we're going to have too many players to re-sign. And um, we'll do a bit of an upgrade here. We should have Star Dev on our quarterback. Although we can't upgrade him on four. But yes, we do have Star Dev. Chris Godwin also went up to Superstar X-Factor. Grimes had Star, which isn't bad. But yeah, Shab getting Star Dev is, is pretty nice for him. I thought that was going to be something that could happen. Got to upgrade short accuracy big time. Because it's nice to stretch the field, but we also got to be able to hit those easy throws. So, AB should have turned auto upgrade off. Martin, Mario Martin, is up to an 88, playing up to a 91 overall with morale. Got to get him better down the field, but 80 short and medium route running. Very good. And then defensively, Cooper had star dev. Devin White up to superstar. Ryan Shilwinka up to superstar. Trey Herndon, I believe, up to star. He won DB of the year. Okay, maybe we re-sign him now. He was a one-year just, ah, we'll get somebody out of free agency. Pretty good pickup. But as you guys know, the team was incomplete. We were working towards, you know, being awesome. We we're getting way closer. And this draft, we're going to have a good draft. Don't want Donovan Smith. Trey Herndon doesn't want to be back. He is 28. It's pretty cheap, though. So... One-year contract, bring him back. He won DB of the year. Might as well. And I don't think we need anybody else. So we're going to go into free agency with 92 mil, looking to spend money. So if we have a great offensive tackle available, we will be signing them either side. Doesn't matter. Tristan Wirfs, we could move over to left tackle now that he's paid. Uh, for sure. Guard is a need. Running back, but I don't know that we necessarily have to pay one. A third receiver could be good. And then defensively, inside linebacker, we could move to a 4-3. It could work out pretty well for us. Good depth at D-tackle with these three guys. And then we would have White, someone that we sign. And we're set up for a 3-4 for a right now, especially if we draft you know, that defensive end. He could play outside linebacker for us. So off-ball linebacker, maybe even a corner or two. We're in a pretty good spot. Just need a couple of things. Nick Bose is here. He's not very interested, but I am. He's 31.8 million per year expected value. That's a lot. Don't really need a quarterback, but there are some amazing ones there. But we'd rather pay the rookie for right now. Don't think we'd pay any of these corners. And the off-ball linebackers do not appear to be good. Frankie Luvu, I guess, is the closest. So this is somebody we could look to sign. I don't know if I love him at inside linebacker. But, you know, he's he's better than what we have. He's at least a stopgap for, you know, two or three years. Three-year contract I'm pretty fine with. He's interested. He wants to be in Tampa. He wants to play with a franchise QB. And, and JT Schaub has the franchise QB tag now, which is really nice. Take a little bit of money off that. And we should be able to bring in Frankie Lubu. Ed Oliver could be nice, too. I'm not sure Logan Hall is ever going to be great for us. Ed Oliver could be good. Only 26 years old. He's just a little bit over $10 million per year. I'm not really too upset with that. I'll offer him a four-year contract. We'll probably go elsewhere, but that's fine. And Jed Wills is going to be the best option at left tackle for us by a lot. 
this has to be the guy that we bring in, you know, no matter what, give him anything that he wants. He has to be our starting left tackle. Then Cam Akers really isn't that expensive. No one's going after him. So I offered him a contract. Not sure if he's going to sign on or not, but I'm going after these five players, Ed Oliver, Cam Akers, Jed Wills, Frankie Louvu, and LaVisca Chenault. The guys, I would say, in order that I want the most here are Jedrick Wills, number one, for sure. And then I don't really care that much about anybody else, to be honest. We'll just kind of see what happens. But they are all gone, and we brought in four of them. Cam Akers, big upgrade at running back. Jedrick Wills, Frankie Louvu, and LaVisca Chenault. We got them on pretty good deals, to be honest, for the most part. No Ed Oliver. He has gone ahead and signed with the Tennessee Titans. But we've done well overall. Nick Bosa, Jalen Hurts, and Gabe Davis to the Giants. Okay. Offensive line looking good. I mean, Grimes is up to a 78 overall after just his rookie season. Pretty good. Pretty good. Still playing down morale-wise. It's going to go up once we start winning, and we're going to start winning. Running back's good. Leonard Fournette's got to go. He's in the final year of his contract. I don't think anyone's going to want him. I'll add him to the trade block. Don't think there's going to be much interest there, but don't really want Leonard Fournette. So if we can get anything, that's improvement. And then defensively, I mean, we got Frankie Louvu. He's going to play inside linebacker for right now. I'd love for there to be a good inside linebacker in the draft. I don't remember anyone blowing me away. I think I have one on my watch list maybe, but we'll see if we end up going after him or not. And uh, Luvu, I don't really want him playing middle linebacker, but it's our best option right now. And I have to trade up to number one is another thing. We have 57 million in free agency. You can look at our team rankings from this past season. Number 29 offense, number 22 defense. There's so much red on there, except for passing yards per game. Playbooks are going to change. Coordinators are going to get fired. We are looking to improve. Going to check out the pro day results here. You guys know what we're looking for. Alfonso Lacey's number one on the board. I imagine he had a pretty good offseason. Yeah, I mean, this guy's unbelievable. If I have to uh, pick up this rebuild in the future, because it's not a rebuild anymore and it's following the career of a generational defensive end, I would not be shocked. Because that's what Alfonso Lacey looks like. 6'5", 275. He is a freak. Really, really interesting looking prospect. And Jamar Cooks looks good too. I mean, this just looks like a really good draft class. Back to back, you know, two really solid ones. I didn't actually remember to check out the draft class as a whole. I was too, you know, caught up in hours individually last year. So that was a little bit of my mistake on that. But it looks like two really solid draft classes in a row. I mean, Jimmy Sharp could be a good linebacker to take. Round one to two, so we'd probably have to spend a first on him. Really, really fast. Skills are decent, although maybe we'd make him a focus player, find out a little bit more. Private workouts, obviously don't need to do anything with Alfonso Lacey. That guy's just already, we know he's going to be amazing. That's my first pick. I I've said it for a while now. That's the guy. Now, Jimmy Sharp, I want to know more about. Greg Bernard looks like he could be pretty good. And you know what? Maybe this tackle. Jose Gooden. Oh, I signed Jedrick Wills. That's right. I uh, should have done the guard instead. Okay. Kind of forgot we, we got Jed Wills. I'm like, oh, we might have a need at left tackle with Donovan Smith gone. But no, we already filled it. But the team's getting better. Last second thoughts before the draft here. Maybe a guard, obviously on offense. And then defensively, linebacker, edge. That, And we still could be good here, by the way, uh, to take you know, what we have and move to a 4-3. There's definitely potential for that still. I'm not letting a pick go by. Falcons in division, in division trade, cry about it, whatever. It's happening. Atlanta Falcons, give me 1-1. One, one. I will give you, we have number six and number seven. Oh my goodness. We are set up in this class. I'll give you a seven. And I don't know. Two fours. It's not enough, but it might be. Oh, what a bunch of idiots. The trade system is still flawed, believe it or not. We just, we gave up essentially nothing to move up to number one. Alfonso Lacey, welcome to Tampa Bay. I mean, it's our next Simeon Rice. It's our next monster defensive end. It's our next uh, Leroy Selman. 
or, or better, right? Here we go. Alfonso Lacey, 22 years old, 6'5", 275 out of Utah. Bone crushing hits. Loves to utilize a spin as a counter move. Swift arm over move. That's a swim move. Utilize power and leverage to bull rush through pass protectors. Boater that runs through the whistle. Looks to rip the ball from runners. I, this guy's a monster. Welcome to the team. Normal dev? No way. 90 strength, 83 speed, 83 acceleration, 84 agility. How in the world is he a normal development player? That is mind-blowing. And now I'm wondering if we consider taking what could be more of a true edge rusher. 6'2", 240, 22 years old. We know he's a really good athlete. Jamar Cooks, elite acceleration, elite jumping, great speed, great strength at outside linebacker. A finesse moves, a pursuit. Jamar Cooks is really good. Would consider him. And then uh, Darnell Wharton, 6'6", 253. I mean, he definitely looks really good too. A play rec, A awareness tell me that his... Overall, should be pretty good. He's a better run defender with that B block should opposed to C for Jamar Cooks. But Cooks is the better athlete. And I think I'm valuing that a little bit more. I don't think I would trade up for either of those guys. And they might just go off the board. So if we get to six and all of those players are gone, those two edge rushers I talked about, I think we just probably trade down. And think about taking either Greg Bernard here out of Vandy. Good athlete, for sure. Definitely can play off the ball. Looks really, really good. A tackle, B coverage, or man coverage, A pursuit, A hit power, B awareness, B man coverage. Looks just be a pretty well-rounded player. And yeah, we could probably play him an inside linebacker. And then a great athlete in Jimmy Sharp here from LSU. Devin White, LSU combination. B block should be pursuit. C tackle is a little low, but A zone coverage, I like. Obviously, a tremendous athlete. We have a bunch of tough choices ahead of us. Darnell Wharton goes at two. I'm, I'm in a tough spot because I'm still thinking Jamar Cooks would be a really good fit at outside linebacker for us. And then Frankie Louvu could stick at inside linebacker. We could still move up. We have options. We really, really do. This fits... Bengals, Bucks, Chiefs. So I guess he's really not expected to go until like six or seven in the draft. I'll simulate and we just might watch him go off the board. It's Dwayne Snell. Cardinals go Jaden Johnson. He might just make it to number six. It's Amir Peel, quarterback from Indiana State. Goes to the Rams. Well, wait, we didn't have to trade up. We just waited and the player... We were going to consider got to us. Jamar Cooks from UCF stays in Central Florida from uh, UCF's campus over west to Tampa. And Jamar Cooks is a buck. Hidden Dev, 80 strength, 84 speed, 90 acceleration. He should be pretty good. Some good looking defensive tackles as well. But I, I think we're going to move up for that inside linebacker. I don't think he's going to make it to our pick. Although Cameron Lamb looks decent as well. I don't know. I, I think we're going to end up taking the wrong one somehow in Jimmy Sharp. But I like the look of Jimmy Sharp. I don't know. I don't really feel too bad about it. Sharp is expected to go in about 20 picks. So, number 27. I probably want to trade up and draft him at number 20. Okay, we're making a move here. It is a first and a fourth in 2025. And Cam Brown, who's my backup right, or Caleb Brown... He doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter. We're getting number 20, and we're getting number 84. A third-round pick this year. I'd rather have the picks this year because I think we're entering our window. And we're just going to see what's available at 20 and reevaluate. Jimmy Sharp goes at 19. Okay, well, there you go. So our best option if we want to take an inside linebacker then becomes Cameron Lamb at 25. Left tackle we're no longer considering. Yeah, it's Cameron Lamb is our choice. That guy really went at 19, dude. Ugh. Like, how do they know? How do they know? The Niners are offering me a one this year and next year. So I'll make a trade happen with them. We get number 31, and hopefully they will not make it that far next year. We hope to be in the Super Bowl. So I'm going to trade down to their spot after trading up. I know it's convoluted. It's just to save time in the video. I don't have to go pick by pick. I would have missed it anyway. 
and the Raiders are offering me a first round pick next year for number 31. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Hopefully their luck runs out as well. And uh, we'll see if the player we would consider is available uh, at number seven here in the second round. I'm not like thrilled either way to draft him, so I don't really care if he's not available. Um, but still is available. We're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on Cameron Lamb from Texas A&M. Six foot, 242, 22 years old. Good athlete. Has decent enough coverage, play rec, hit power, block shedding. Tackling at C to F is pretty concerning. Pursuit B to D, pretty concerning. We got a good athlete. I don't know if we got a good linebacker. And then with the last pick, I'll actually draft in the draft. We'll go with Gabe Hoover. Supposed to go on day three, but seems pretty good. I could see him starting at center for us. Elite change of direction. Um, not like terribly weak. So hidden dev, 83 strength I saw. Like that quite a bit. Gabe Hoover, maybe a potential starter. With star development, I think there's definitely potential for that. The end of our draft though. Alfonso Lacey is a 78 overall. Not bad, but not as amazing as it looked. Got yeah, amazing strength. Speed's pretty good. Block shedding is pretty good. Power and finesse moves are pretty good. He's just a pretty good player. Uh, all of his traits went away somehow pretty much from the scouting report. Don't know how that happened. Jamar Cooks is a 75. Not the most athletic. 84 speed was a little bit disappointing, but 90 acceleration is great. Finesse moves is pretty good too. You definitely see him starting. The strength at 80 was what actually surprised me the most. Very, very strong. I think he could definitely start at outside linebacker for us. 71 for Cameron Lambs, pretty good. 72 for Gabe Hoover is real good. Maybe he starts at left guard immediately. And we'll see what the rest of the class looks like. I thought it was going to be amazing. We did get the best player in the draft, but this was not a good draft class. The highest overall was 78. No 77s. Next highest was a 76 and only three of them. This reminds me of the 2013 NFL draft. I was just Riddled with busts. We're on a little something more Bucks themed. This looks red enough. I don't know. No one, or like 1% of people probably would have noticed the hoodie change had I not mentioned it. We're going to move Gabe Hoover over to left guard. We're going to call him the Hoover Dam. Kind of a decent nickname for an offensive lineman. You know, blocks water is what a dam does in some sense, right? But uh, he's going to be blocking defensive linemen. Not quite the same, but good upgrades for JT Schaub, regardless. So he'll be blocking four. And we've got, oh, a decent group together. Defensively, I've got high hopes for these guys. Hooper's going to start over Logan Hall. Lacey's going to start. Hopefully you get a dev trade at some point. Hooks is going to start. We're going to be good to go. This is a good team. I believe in it. We are going to dominate. I'm going to try out these offensive and defensive playbooks ready for a new season ready for a new challenge and hopefully we see some development as well as our first playoff berth only what two years in a row of missing the playoffs i think we've rebuilt the team to a really good spot though so i have high hopes that this will be a playoff year 2024 let's go three and three here at week eight our offense is really bad our defense is slightly better now our offense I tried out the uh, Bucks playbook. Josh Allen was putting up really good numbers in it back-to-back -back years. Yes, he's a higher overall quarterback than our quarterback, but you know, I, I really think that uh, we should be seeing better production than 23rd in the league. Chris Godwin getting some XP. Mario Martin could get 150. I could see that happening. Who's going to be a free agent? Chris Godwin does not want to be back. Neither does Ryan Jensen. Why? Carlton Davis... I don't know if we're not Joe Tryon, Shuenka. No one wants to be on the team. Is it a scheme issue? We changed schemes and now you guys don't want to be here. No, it doesn't have a factor for JTS. He's going to have to start handing out some big contracts. Carlton Davis wants more money. Ryan Jensen is still good. I would love to give him a low risk contract, bring him back for two years. Chris Godwin is going to want a lot of money. I want so much money. And he doesn't like that we don't win enough. Really on that. Me neither. Chris Godwin's probably a franchise tag candidate to me. 
because he's going to be expensive either way. I don't know that we end up going that direction, but it's definitely an option. And I have to bring back JTS. Very easy team-friendly contract for me. He's selling himself way short to the point of where we can probably even afford to trade or pay Chris Godwin. I'd love for him to offer, or I'd love to offer him this low risk and have him accept it. And he's back. Okay, that's not too bad. Nine and eight. We're seeing improvement. We just cannot ascend to the top of the NFC South yet, which is bad news. 15th best offense, number 13th best defense. We're about middle of the pack right now. JT Schaub had a great year, over 5,000 yards passing, 39 touchdowns to 13 picks. I think we're in the right offense. Cam Akers was good on minimal touches. Chris Godwin was exceptional. Mario Martin was really good. LaVisca Chenault dominated. I mean, we were a high-powered passing offense. And then defensively, numbers appear to be okay. Vita Vea was dominant, although you got to admit... What a season for the rookie Alfonso Lacey. 15 sacks for someone with only normal development. You know, disappointing draft pick. Obviously, he was the best in the class. Could it was the best possible player we could have taken in that year. But definitely disappointing. Jamar Cooks put up seven and a half sacks. Uh, he wasn't starting the entire year as a pass rusher. Uh, we eventually moved Lacey over to rush D tackle. I think that's part of why he produced as much as he did. Frankie Louvre with four picks. You know, it, it still might just be the right move to go Chiefs offense and defense and switch to a 4-3. I mean, the top defenses are 4-3 in the game. Although the Titans only allowed 381 points. Titans should be a 3-4. But I also think, I mean, yards is important too. Maybe try the Jaguars? It always seems like it's the wrong move, but sometimes they do really well. Quick update on Mario Martin, by the way, for those curious. He's up to a 91 overall after just his second season. Developing as a route runner, but it seems like he doesn't really even need it. Yes, there are some boosts here up to a 94. We'll just count them. 99 catching, 99 catching traffic, 95 spectacular catch, still 99 jumping, release at a 94. His speed's at a 97. And the Cowboys playbook is never a bad idea either. Oh, a lot, a lot to unpack in here. Alfonso Lacey does win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Now, we are up to an 89 team overall. 91 offense, 89 defense. Not really a math guy, but I feel like that should be a 90 overall. That's just me. But we got to be a playoff team. I think it's just been a playbook issue to this point. I'm going with KC offense and Jacksonville defense. Will I live to regret that? Certainly possible, but it's what we're going to try at the very least. And uh, Carlton Davis needs an extension. I'd probably do about two years. And that's pretty much the only guy I want to bring back. Other than that, we can look to, you know, fill our final needs in, um, in to a two-year deal in uh, free agency. So we'll do low risk just to make sure he resigns. Welcome back, Carlton Davis. Okay, free agency. Just looking to bring in the best players we can. Buda Baker would fit that. So would Trey Smith, to be honest. And JT Schaub is up to superstar development. So much for drafting a bust. You know, the thing that's most interesting to me is this throw power has not gone up at all since entering the league. Usually that's something that gets upgraded at least once. Has not been upgraded at all. Doesn't really seem to matter too much. Trey Smith, I could definitely see giving a contract to. We don't really need him. Or maybe not. Could use another tight end. Our offense... Very good. And then defensively, Lacey is up to superstar development. How did that happen? He just got it. Development trait increased, I guess, because of the sack total maybe. And then defensive rookie of the year up to superstar. Well, suddenly that pick is not so disappointing anymore. That is awesome. We'll do run stopper since he's playing a little bit of defensive tackle for us as well. Makes sense to boost that up by three. Okay. Up to 83. That's with a plus four. Cooks had star dev. Uh, other than that, though, we look pretty good. I could even see corner being a need for us. All right, so I'm really only going after two players to increase our talent in the secondary. Asante Samuel Jr. and Buda Baker. And we should get both of them, to be honest. I think we should. We do get both. Baker's an upgrade over Nasir Adderley, even though Adderley's still going to play. And Asante Samuel Jr. joins our secondary of former... Uh, or kids of former NFL players with Antoine Winfield Sr. 
and Asante Samuel Sr. now at this point. So kind of a fun little theme developing in the secondary. Nasir Adderley is the, I believe, grandson or maybe like great nephew of Herb Adderley. Definitely related. I want to say it's grandfather, but it could be that Herb Adderley's his great uncle. I can't remember. Can't draw any other connections in the secondary, but there's a bit of a theme. NFL lineage. NFL draft time 2025. Let's have a good draft. We pick at number 13, Vikings on the clock at number one overall. Okay. Is there anyone? I really haven't looked at the class too much. Is there anyone worth drafting? For my needs, probably not. So then it becomes, we even draft a player at all. There appear to be some decent ones in the class, but with multiple first round picks, we might be in a situation where we're looking to trade those picks for game changers. Offensively, maybe a stud tight end over Kate Otten. And then defensively, I just still like developing some of these players. I know they don't look amazing right now. It would be a defensive lineman, probably, right? Or, or an off-ball linebacker, maybe a corner. Okay, wow. Two first-round picks gives me an aging, yet still very, very highly rated Miles Garrett. That's the draft. I mean, it doesn't matter. We got the best player we could have. It's a big upgrade on the defensive line. We didn't necessarily need it, but I think it was just too good to pass on. But we could bring Mike Evans back. Went to a Texas school. Pretty much where the similarities run out, to be honest. Bills are offering us a first round pick for number 15 overall in the second round. Or not number 15 overall, but the 15th pick of the second round. I'm going to do that all day. And I'm going to simulate to the end. I know nothing happened in this draft other than getting a 99 overall player. No draft picks. We did all right. We also got an actual Texas A&M receiver, Alex Cooks, like Mike Evans is why I make that comparison. Can fly. Very agile. Okay. Alex Cooks is not a bad receiver to get in the middle of the third round. The rest of the class was, oh, pretty bad. Hope those guys never see the field. And the rest of the draft class was not impressive. Dude, what is going on with some of these classes? I thought it was going to be loaded based off the first one, but no. They've all been pretty lackluster. Defense looks really good. Really good. Now, there might be too many cooks in the kitchen, as they say. Too many chefs in the kitchen. We have so many pass rushers. But I don't think it's a bad thing. We just have a bunch of really talented players. We'll figure it out. There we go. Six and one at the midseason mark. The number four scoring offense. Number two defense. On average there, we were winning by two scores a game. Very, very nice to see. And uh, we got some upgrades too. We might spend some of these really just Cam Akers. Try to re-sign some players if we can. And uh, we'll uh, just push forward, make our first playoffs. I'm pretty much guaranteed to make it at this point. We could fall off a bit, but I don't really see any way we win fewer than 10 games. Scott White, we don't need. Jake Camarda. I mean, it's, it's that whole draft class. Um, that we saw last year in real life. Jake Camarda, I want back. Kate Otten, I want back. That's, that's probably it. Money's going to be tough. I just see the cap room in the top right. It could be falling apart. But uh, we have some money freeing up soon with guys like Buda Baker going to be gone. I mean, Miles Garrett is obviously really expensive right now. But really what it looks like is everyone's going to be a free agent at the same time. Miles Garrett, Vita Vea, Buda Baker, Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, Ryan Jensen, Frankie Louvu, Mario Martin, Nasir Adderley. But that's why this is our two-year window. Got to win the Super Bowl this year, and then we're out of here anyway. So we're not going to worry about uh, re-signing anybody at this moment in time. We're going to worry about making the playoffs and then making a Super Bowl run. We go 13-4. and four. We, we got blown out by the Niners in Week 18, by the way. We go 13-4 and four and are playing... In the wild card. How is that possible? Who won 14 games? Cowboys also won 13. As did the Vikings. Okay, Chiefs won 15. 15 and 2. They're pretty good. JT Schaub, 4,500 passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, rushing. Cam Akers did what he had to do, about 1,000 yards, 15 TDs. Rashad White was very good complimentary backup as well. 
uh, receiving. Chris Godwin over 1,300 yards, 18 TDs. Kate Otten, dominant in the KC book. Mario Martin, you know, as not being the receiver one and tight end being more heavily featured, didn't put up quite as amazing numbers, but was still very, very good and is still developing really well. He's going to jump Chris Godwin pretty soon, I would say. Godwin's at a 96 overall. Mario Martin is on his heels. LaVisca Chenault, good. And then defensively, Devin White, 129 tackles, 7 for loss. Lulu over 100 as well. Miles Garrett, though, was very good. 29, or excuse me, 21 tackles for loss, 21 sacks. Lacey had 9.5, 8.5 for Vea, 8.5 for Joe Tryon Showinka. Very good. Eight interceptions for Jamel Dean, eight picks. Jamel Dean, have a year. Eight interceptions. He's going to win DB of the year, surely, with eight picks. I mean, there's no way around that. We are a 93 overall. The Saints are an 85, but they do have Lamar Jackson. We're going to jump in here, do a little bit of super simming, and hopefully we can knock off this division rival. Saints, Bucks. The Bucks have incredible unis to me. The fact that they went to those alarm clock, disgusting, like Doug Martin jerseys for a bit. Like, maybe a little bit at the end of Doug Martin's tenure there. Uh, who, is, who is a better one? I mean, Jameis Winston, alarm clock. Terrible. These jerseys are just so classic, so good. And uh, this is a really close playoff game. The Saints are fighting to stay in it. They are right in it. And uh, we might jump in here on offense. Schaub in at quarterback. Rashad White in at fullback is so bad. We got space up the middle. Akers with speed. And that is a big first down that could end things here in Tampa. Oh, dude, Mario Martin's wearing number one. That is amazing. That is an amazing jersey choice as Akers is wrestled down. Final timeout called by the Saints. I do want to throw Martin a jump ball at one point in this game. Not going to do it here. Going to take some more time off. And Cam Akers fumbled the ball. Cam, Cam Akers, man. I mean, yeah, the boos are well earned. We're going to lose the game because I'm running the ball like I should be doing. He just coughed it right up. Oh, goodness. Miles Garrett, third sack of the game. Four down territory, so third and 17 doesn't really matter. They're actually going to throw that. And, dude, animation terrible. Uh, really didn't think they were going to throw that at all. That wasn't really open, so I kind of left it. Cover the middle of the field. They need a touchdown, though. So, all this dinking and dunking, they can do that. That's fine. 20 seconds left to go in the ball game. Quick throw. Get outside. Don't let him get out of bounds. Give me a runoff here. They might have one shot to the end zone. We're going to call a timeout. Couldn't get it off. Quick throw. He's wide open. Just wrap up. Game over. We're moving on to the divisional. That was crazy. Okay. That was wild. 13-4 and four Minnesota Vikings. What, are they, what is their playbook, man? I guess we don't need it. But the fact that they won 13 games with an 84 overall is disrespectful. Because we won 13 games with a 93 overall. But as we saw this year, I mean, I'm not going to name any teams. But you can fluke into a 13-4 and four record if you're successful enough in one score of games with, you know, not a great team. Again, I'm not going to name any teams, but uh, there are some teams that that maybe applies to. All right, House of the Vikings. Come on, Bucks On the board first, 7 nothing. Minnesota answers with a field goal. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for the Bucks, but it is still anyone's game here. Minnesota Vikings make it a one-possession game and actually make it a one-point game. We need to try and extend this as much as possible as we get to the fourth quarter. 28-16 is a really good start, but the Vikings not taking their foot off the gas pedal. But it doesn't matter. Their defense couldn't get enough stops in the end. We win. We advance to the conference championship 28-23 over the Minnesota Vikings. JT Schaub throws for over 240 yards. Two touchdowns, good enough for a win. And a conference championship appearance. Oh, it's going to be Cowboys Bucks. We saw this in real life. But these are two very different teams, and uh, it's a very different point in history. This is, what, 2025 as opposed to the 2022 season? So, I mean, who knows if Dak Prescott's even with the Cowboys anymore? He could be. He might be. But we got JT Schaub. We've got a great defense. 
There's the plus one throw power I was waiting on. Actually, plus two at some point. He's up to 96 now. Short accuracy, still not very good. But he's still getting it done. No real complaints there. NFC Championship against the Dallas Cowboys. They're an 85 overall to our 93. We got to win. They do still have Dak, though. And that might actually work to our benefit. Another road game for this team, despite winning 13 games, is seemingly inconceivable. We'll advance to the end. Jump in if we have to. Cowboys on the board first. 7-0. Now 7-3. 10-3 after a Dallas field goal, but it's all tied up. Dallas quick strike, though. We need to play some good defense. That's how you do it. And a field goal before the half makes it close. We take the lead now into the third quarter. It's 23-17 to bucks. Cowboys take the lead 24-23. We are in on offense. And we could time this up really, really well. Although, I want to see what Martin can do. We're going to take time off the clock. It's first down. We are in the driver's seat right now. They're playing single high with the safety shaded over towards the right side of our field. Trips right. We might have a big time advantage. And we're going to lob it up deep. Couldn't do it. That's intercepted. Oh my God, this game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this game. Come on, dude. Donovan Wilson. One throw and I throw a pick. Trying to step up and just lob it deep. Took too many steps up in the pocket. I was trying to pass lead up. And we get sacked. And of course, trying to go deep down the field with a high point here. Which I still like our matchup. Uh, and it instead is a laser beam right to Donovan Wilson, dude. I mean, goodness. Now we have to play defense and uh, st stop a touchdown. That might be roughing the passer. Okay, physical game of football. Physical brand we're playing here. Third and 10. Defense is held up pretty nicely. Check down, Dak. Check down, Dak. Throw a pick. Oh, where's my throw at a sack interception? All right, we're going to need a touchdown. Still same position, really, except instead of a field goal to end it. Who knows? Cam Akers may have fumbled again. I don't know. But we need a touchdown. Three minutes to drive down the field. This is very doable. It's actually a big third down and 10. We're wide open with Auden. Dropped it in the bucket. JT Schaub. That was a big time throw. That was a big time throw to Kate Otten. And you know what's funny? Is uh, Mario... Martin won immediately off the line, but wasn't running a nine route. Would have been nice if he was. And we might give him a chance on this. Go up and get it. Martin! Oh, he's, he's a cheat code. Mario Martin. Single coverage is not enough for the six foot five, 230 pound monster out of Colorado, of all places. Dion, great recruiter to his credit. High points it. Comes down with it. Shows the CB the ball. Says, you want it? Too bad. Touchdown. Game over. Except the game wasn't over. 32 seconds on the clock. Touchdown wins it for him. Field goal ties it. Got to keep him out of field goal range. 17 seconds on the clock. They have Chase Claypool. Okay. One timeout. Dak checks down. That's fine with me. Now, they do actually call that complete, which could change things. Gives them an extra five yards to work with. And they're going to choose to run the ball as a result. This is not field goal range yet, and certainly not for Brett Maher. Although that is not their quarterback. Or their, what? Their kicker. I don't know what that says. This is a deep one. 55 yards, and the kick is no good. Not a, not a great attempt, honestly. The only way we can lose now is with a sack fumble, pick six return to the house. I was just going to throw it deep. To Mario Martin be a fun end of the game. Uh, I know I could have needed it and kneeled it down, taking the win. But uh, we move on to the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay Bucks live on. Dak Prescott, zero touchdowns. Tristan Wirfs will join the 99 club. Super Bowl rematch. Bucks, Chiefs. No Tom Brady, but of course the Chiefs, for whatever reason, have held on to Patrick Mahomes. Who could even? Who could even say why they've made that decision? He is a 99 overall. Threw for over 4,800 yards, 45 touchdowns to only six interceptions. Quite the year. It went 15 and two as a result. We are a 93 overall. They are a 90. They've got a superstar X-Factor defensive tackle to pair with another X-Factor defensive tackle in Chris Jones. 
Seems like this could be a pretty good defensive line. We know that their offense will be high-powered under Patrick Mahomes. We'll try to win as a result. Super Bowl starts now. Here we go. They got Ryan Stonehouse too. Oh no. They're up 10-0 already. We need to find the end zone. It's 17 now. 24-3. But this game is far from over. It's now 24-31-13. That was not good. All right, we're getting rushed. Down by 18. We got CD Lamb. Yeah, all right. It's it's over. It's over. We'll do one more year. Is there any way I can re-sign anybody in here? Oh, I can. We, we have 14 mil. Kate Otten is now a superstar. Definitely want Kate Otten back. Give him a low-risk contract. Don't need Logan Hall. Rashad White played well, but we don't need him. Jake Camarda, we need somebody to kick. Hunt, I should say. So Jake Camarda is back. Four mil left to work with is not enough. I mean, it is probably enough. I want, <laughs> I want Zion McCollum back. We have to jump to the NFL draft. We had no money beyond signing the guys that we brought back, but we do have the number five overall pick in the draft. Trading down is a beautiful thing. Davion Donaldson from Middle Tennessee State. They have way too many, like, whatever schools producing superstar QBs. Like, yes, we've seen a couple of North Dakota State guys, Carson Wentz and Trey Lance. However, those guys are not usually projected to go number one overall not usually usually it's someone from a power five you know occasionally you do see guys from non-power fives you know fcs but non-power five like josh allen from wyoming go top 10 it's a rarity i don't need every quarterback at the top to be middle tennessee state or utep round one still at yale look at the power five schools here not middle tennessee state washington not utep not memphis not yale unc BYU is Big 12 now, so they count. North Dakota State. Some of these guys down the board make sense, but every draft, man, it's just random schools. It doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things, but you have to admit, it's a little bizarre. I'm looking at running backs, and I'm looking at tight end. That's around three to four player, Kevin Bradley. He's pretty good. We have number five and number 31. Um, I don't even know how to spend this pick, to be honest. We could trade it. But I don't have the cap space to take on a big contract, so we are not going to do that. And we'll just take a shot at a random player. Now, a middle linebacker from Texas named Tank intrigues me. I can't lie to you. I can't in good faith take him as he seems bad. But, uh, yeah, it's tempting. Niners offering me a first this year and next year. I know we're not doing next year. But we might as well just keep the team set up. Trade down to number 18. Still trying to run this like an actual team would. Although I've made some crazy moves in this draft. Don't worry about all that. We're still trying to set the team up as if we were going to continue on is more of my point. Who is Nick Leach? A tackle, A zone coverage. Great speed. A pursuit, A tackle. I'm Or A hit power. I'm, I'm interested. But I think Brian Sampson was somebody that I looked at. That looked really good. Elite speed. A pursuit. Hit power is not great. A play rec. A to C tackle. I'm going to go... I mean, they're both Washington. They're teammates. These are two outside linebackers on the same team. That's sick. From UW. Nick Leach is really well-rounded. Maybe a bit better of a... True thumping linebacker. But then... Uh, Nick Leach is more of that hybrid kind of dimebacker. Good speed as well. Or, no, he was the guy we, hold on. Who was I just talking about? Was Brian Sampson the one with elite speed? Because I'm going to take him if, if he has elite speed. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take Brian Sampson. He's got, for sure, the higher potential. Because he's got A to C block shedding as opposed to Nick Leach, who has just C. Now, A tackle, A zone coverage, but I, I don't know. It's close, dude. I don't know. I'm going to take the guy who has elite speed. Normal dev, but he is fast. 87. Wow. I think we made the wrong move. We'll see at the end of this thing. And you know what? Who knows? If Leech is available, maybe we'll, we'll take him at 31 here. He is not available. Josh Mabry, I think, is the running back that I like that I was looking at, right? Great speed. 
Elite jumping. Maybe it wasn't. He looks okay. Oh, I like Doug Warner down the board, too. He was a little bit faster. Can't juke. Really just a straight line runner. Let's take him anyway. Josh Mabry from LSU. Hidden Dev can really run. 94 speed, 90 change of direction. Decent agility, acceleration. Seems to be pretty good. Doug Warner, I think, was the other one I liked. We're at the end of the uh, second round now. Kevin Bradley, the tight end, is still on the board. We need more depth at tight end. He's got a run block. He's 6'4", 255 from Bama. Good catch in traffic. Good athlete. He is the one. Only normal development. Doesn't matter. He's a backup tight end. Draft recap. Samson's a 74. Mabry's a 73. Bradley's 71. The good defensive tackles is 71. I mean, decent draft class for us. Nothing exceptional. Uh, we will have to see what the rest of the class looks like. Christian Buchanan was a running back. Did I look at him? Not sure. I would have seen a pretty good player. Not amazing, but pretty good. Overall, is a little bit higher than I feel like it should be just from the eye test. Top player is a 79 overall corner. Would have been really nice, but we don't really need that. Another good running back, Arkhamus Mullins from Washington State. Strong uh, group of linebackers from the state of Washington. Nick Leach was a 75. Also normal development. Also, um, I thought it said 87 speed, 84 speed. I don't know. I think we made the right decision. It doesn't really matter. In the end, like Leach was a slightly higher overall. We don't really need a cover guy like that though. So I don't know. So this is the team. We are very good. Defensively, oh, we got Gray, too. Aram also has star dev. I assume they're both star. Feldeen, superstar dev. It's a great team. Kind of all I got for you. Fantastic depth as well. Lacey's up to superstar X-Factor. I didn't even notice that. A defensive line with Miles Garrett, Vita Vea, Lacey, Ryan Shoenka. We are going to be... Very, very difficult to stop. But this is where our window is. This is it. We've got a great team. Contracts are expiring. This is the year we got to win it all. 2026. I usually don't go this deep in a rebuild, but here we are. In the wild card again at 13 and 4. Come on, dude. We deserve better than that. JT Shop threw 47 touchdowns, but also 19 interceptions, 4,800 yards. Cam Akers was amazing, 15 TDs. We scored a lot of touchdowns. Oh my goodness. Receiving, Chris Godwin still producing like crazy. 18 touchdowns. Mario Martin is still not receiver one. So he still hasn't been producing like crazy, but he obviously could be. Deep route running, never really got upgraded. And then defensively, Miles Garrett, still a really big part of this team. Three players with over 100 tackles. I think maybe because our offense scored so quickly. Vea with 18 for loss, 16 for Garrett, 14 for Alfonso Lacey, 11 for Tryon Shawinka, quarterback sacks, four approaching or over double digits. Vita Vea was only one away. 10 for Alfonso Lacey, 12 and a half for JTS, as I've been calling him, and 19 and a half for Miles Garrett. We are a force to be reckoned with. This should be a Super Bowl team. Hopefully, we can get in. We're a 95 overall. This is one of the best teams I've had ever in rebuilds. This team is dominant. And we'll probably lose in the wild card to the 86 overall 9-8 and eight Philadelphia Eagles with home field advantage. We beat them by a field goal. Uh, Seahawks in the divisional. I'm not jumping in here because we did it last season. We win another one. And then we have a plus 10 overall to the division rival. What is it? See, who... Are we, is it the Panthers? I forgot who we're playing. Mabry only had freaking 17 snaps, dude, the entire season. Yeah, it is the Panthers. I forgot right as I started talking. See if we can beat them. We have a massive advantage. Please, Madden Sim, do not screw me over here. Show me the Super Bowl. Back to back, please. Survey says... How long can I stall this? We're not in it. It's Panthers Raiders. Give me a break, dude. We had a plus 10 overall. Lose by a touchdown. Ugh. Well, that is going to do it. No Super Bowl, unfortunately, but obviously built a juggernaut. Schaub might even go up to Superstar X-Factor, although this is Super Bowl week, so he would have already, right? Uh, new wide receiver one, Kate Otten, Superstar Dev as well. And then defensively, a phenomenal defense. It really, really is. 
Uh, but that'll do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.